Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today we have an interesting one to look at. We have ourselves a ThinkPad, and if you can tell by the back, this is definitely a yoga model. And this is a very important yoga model because this is the very first X1 Yoga. The X1 Yoga did a whole lot of things. First off, it introduced the Yoga platform, which of course includes that 360 degree foldable hinge and lift and lock keyboard, which is phenomenally cool, uh, to the X1 Carbon uh, design language. So you do have a X1 uh, style looking deck but with the beautiful flexibility of the yoga style hinge. And if you want to learn more about the first time that the yoga hinge made its way to ThinkPad, click on this video over here to learn about the very first model, but also the development history according to Aramasa Naito and the book that he wrote on ThinkPad. So getting back to this model, this one was announced in January of 2016 at CES, often where laptops are announced, of course. And this thing wowed in one major area, and it was one of the very first ThinkPads that came with the OLED display. Uh, this thing really impressed people because it had a 2 million to 1 contrast ratio, which meant that you had some very popping color and some very deep blacks. One of the other things that's worth noting is that the X1 Carbon Gen 4, which I haven't featured on the channel at the timing of this video, uh, did not come with a touch display. So if you wanted a touch X1 Carbon, you had to get the X1 Yoga. And I can understand why they did that. They wanted to give you a reason of buying this platform, but they also wanted to give you a really good touch experience. So they figured if you want the touch experience, you're going to go for the Yoga. Let's dive in and take a look at some specifications here. We have a 14 inch uh, 16 by 9 display. And the default panel is a 1920 by 1080, 270 nit, 700 to 1 contrast ratio panel. So even the base panel is still quite nice. It also came with a WQHD 2560 by 1440 panel that was also 240 nits in the 700 to 1 contrast ratio. And then there was the real star of the show, the uh, WQHD uh, 2560 by 1440 OLED, uh, which was a 300 nit panel and had that 2 million to 1 contrast ratio. Uh, they were really showcasing off the panel technology, and regrettably, uh, this one is not one of the OLED panels, but it is very nice on all of the other specs that are inside. CPUs were 6th generation Intel. You had an i5 or an i7, and I'll list them up here on the screen here for you. And all of this is um, essentially operating with the Intel HD 520 GPU. RAM was uh, 4, 8, or 16 gigs of low power DDR3 1866 megahertz. In terms of storage, you had M.2 2280 NVMe style drives. Depending on which display you got in your uh, machine, there would be two different batteries. So if you had an LED panel, it was a 4 cell 52 watt hour. But if it was an OLED panel, it's going to you know, drain your battery considerably more, so they gave you a whole extra 4 watt hour. So if you had the OLED panel installed, there was a 4 cell 56 watt hour that they were able to squeeze in there somehow. It's not a guarantee that if you have a 56 watt hour battery that you have an OLED panel, because if it were me, I would probably retrofit the larger battery if I ever had to replace it, because why wouldn't you? Um, but it might be an indicator. Let's do a quick uh, tour of some of the ports and features. We do have a dual microphone array at the top, sporting uh, right underneath the 720p web camera. We do have a touch uh, capacitive Windows logo button there for your tablet computing needs. We obviously have a backlit keyboard. I don't think these came in non-backlit. However, always look for the pictogram. If you see the pictogram, you know you've got backlight. If you don't see it, you know that you don't. You, of course, have dedicated track point buttons and a very smooth, like we're talking very silky smooth um, trackpad there. We also have a fingerprint reader over here on the top of the deck. And now let's move on to the ports on the sides. So on the left-hand side, we have the power plug, which is your standard square plug. You have a proprietary uh, one-dock solution. You have a mini display port of 1.2, and then you have a USB 3.0 port. 
Along the back, we have uh, some exhaust for the fan, of course. And if you look very carefully, there's a little tab that we can uh, flip open, and that will reveal uh, your SIM card slot uh, for any LTE connections, as well as micro SD for that expandable storage. So very tastefully hidden there. And then over on the right-hand side, we have the rest of the ports and controls. We have a Kensington lock slot, HDMI 1.4, another USB, another USB, a headphone microphone combo jack, and then we, of course, we have our volume rocker, we have a power button, and then we have the uh, very iconic garage-style ThinkPad Pro pen, which, of course, charges up when it's uh, located inside of the machine. So those are all the ports. Let's flip this upside down and start to uh, take this apart. Now, I wanna mention that this computer was purchased by me uh, from a company in Canada called Knowledge Computers, and they do some refurbishing, some recycling. And this, according to them, is a B-grade machine. And I have to say, uh, I couldn't imagine how pristine their A-grade looks. Uh, these machines, and I have bought a few from them now, uh, the P50 being one of them, have been very, very nice machines. Uh, so I think they do good work. Um, I'm not too sure about their international shipping, but if you are in Canada, uh, you might want to reach out to them and uh, see what they might have uh, for you, because I've found their prices to be very reasonable. Uh, the shipping, very high quality. Uh, so yeah, they seem seem like good people. Okay, with all of those screws uh, spun out, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, encourage this uh, corner up as the clips let go. We're going to get our inexpensive plastic pry tool, which is the old uh, gift card. All right, that was pretty stiff uh, coming off there, but we did manage to get it. And on the inside, we can uh, see a couple things. One, we can see the 52 uh, watt hour battery. Somehow they can get 56 watt hours in there. Uh, I'm guessing the battery is not physically any larger because it doesn't really look like you have a whole lot of room to cram battery. Uh, so if we're, once we're on the inside uh, to do a lot of the maintenance, all the components are kind of around the edges or underneath the battery. Uh, so we can see a CMOS battery, the main battery, the garaged pen. We can see where the trackpad uh, would be located. We've got two downward firing speakers. All the ports are, of course, running down uh, the edges here. And the boards themselves are very uniquely uh, designed. And this one is in great shape. It's got all of the uh, shielding still in place pretty much from the factory. The fan looks like it's quite clean. Um, but beyond uh, doing some preventative maintenance, there isn't really a whole lot uh, to open this up to. So over here under this flap, we do have uh, the Wi-Fi card. And then under here, we have the M.2. Realistically, because this is a yoga uh, with everything soldered on, there really isn't a whole lot of upgrading to do underneath the hood. However, um, I don't normally talk about price so early, but this is kind of uh, an interesting point is that yes This is sixth generation Intel and it's not necessarily going to you know officially support Windows 11 But you can get one of these machines for about a hundred US dollars That's a lot of durable reliable quality computer that will run Windows 10 and it will do a lot of stuff for you That's that's really good uh, bang for your buck and if you want to run one that has eighth generation Intel, uh, you can find them uh, for around 300 US dollars. Um, so just to give you an idea that these machines uh, may not be upgradable, but they are very affordable. So we're gonna throw the cover back on and then we're gonna do some boot tests. All right, so now that we have this thing back together, let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see what we get for a boot time. I mean, what can you say? That is snappy. And 
I really need to stress when I said during the disassembly that this thing is a very cost-effective little machine. Uh, it really does uh, live up to its reputation of being um, just a durable, responsive, and just slick piece of equipment. So this one is a Core i5-6300U, 8 gigs of RAM, and it just has the standard 1920 by 1080 panel. And realistically, this would make a great little computer for people that just need uh, the basic fundamentals. So overall, I hope you enjoyed uh, the look at this little laptop here. It is uh, a really slick piece of kit. It's very well built. You are getting X1 levels of durability and build quality. You're not getting any real upgrade ability paths uh, on this fellow, but if you can find them at around 100 US dollars, uh, it's a great Windows 10 machine. It'll run Linux uh, really, really well. Once again, you have that full uh, convertible experience that is just very intuitive and easy to use. You have that touch capacitive Windows button, a keyboard that completely sucks in uh, when the unit is flipped over, and just for everything else that you could possibly need, you of course have the pen uh, out the bottom. That is very, very responsive, very smooth, and easy to use. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you've enjoyed taking a look at the X1 Yoga. If you do have any stories about your experience or your time with one of these devices, I would love to hear about it in the comment section down below because that information will be useful not only to the general public, but any potential buyers that are looking for a real budget machine that has a lot to give. And if you were one of the lucky few that can find one of those OLED panels out there, what a treat uh, that would be in person. And as always, if you enjoyed this sort of content, I'll leave some YouTube stuff over here and down here for your enjoyment on future videos on the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.